Chapter 1. Being Recruited The sun hung high in a cloudless sky above Canterlot as ponies below lived their daily lives. Stores had their doors wide open and the best displays in the windows, hoping desperately to draw a customer or two, three if they were lucky. Ponies of all shapes and sizes trotted about the cobblestone streets, some stopping to gaze at windows, some arguing with a food stall owner about the price of cucumbers, and the occasional one with a shopping bag. It was a world a pony could easily get lost in. One stall vendor sighed heavily as yet another nameless pony bypassed his stand. The pony that walked had his saddlebags on his hindquarters and looked packed. His wings were tightly pressed against his side, and he gazed up the building facades, hoping to find a sign or something to lead him where he was going. He had a pale ochre coat and fiery red eyes that glanced about under his dark brown mane. It stuck up at odd angles, giving him almost a feral look, but he patiently made his way through the city. <sighs> Where is the recruitment station? he said aloud, frustrated. Canterlot was a huge city, much bigger than his native San Francisco, and three times as crowded. Every building looked the same, and the roads were never stayed in a straight line. Finally tired, the orange stallion took a detour through the alleyway between the furniture shop and the main salon. The crowd noise quieted down, and he sat on his haunches. Turning to his saddlebags, the pegasus pulled out a folded piece of parchment, which unfolded was a map of Canterlot. He studied the map for a few seconds before a rustling from the alleyway caught his attention. Curious, he looked up, but saw nothing. Returning his attention to the map, he got a few more seconds of concentration in before he heard the rustling again. Drawing his attention the second time, the orange pegasus scanned the alley, noting there were several doors, two dumpsters, and four windows looking down into the alley. He shrugged again and returned to the map for a brief second before being tackled. The stallion yelped in surprise and tumbled to his right, trying not to land on his wing. He landed with a hard flump and took a second to gain his composure. Hysterical cackling came from his left, where he was tackled, and the figure pushed himself off of him and fell over backwards, laughing onto itself. The orange stallion righted himself and cast a mean glare at the figure laughing at him. It was a dark-colored pegasus with... Wait, bat wings? He murmured to himself as he noticed her teeth and mane. She had fangs instead of canines like normal ponies, and her mane was rather short and colored midnight blue. The pony rolled around twice on the ground, still laughing until the pegasus said something. <laughs> Do you mind? He grumbled to the pony. The pony finally started to calm down, but still laughed as one eye half opened. <laughs> your, your face! Priceless! The pony exclaimed as he continued laughing. The ochre pegasus contorted his face into something of a scowl before retrieving his map and said, Well... If you'll excuse me. The laughing pony finally calmed to the point of standing up before he walked away and said, Oh, come on. It was just a bit of fun. The stallion didn't even look back as he said, Fun for you, maybe, but not for me. He heard a sucking of teeth and the pony said, ah, No pony ever wants to have fun here. Okay, look, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you are asking for it. If I was a mugger, you wouldn't have said a chance, so consider it a lesson. By now, the stallion had assumed the pony was a mare due to her voice, but still turned to face her. Oh, well thank you. I'll be sure to keep that in mind, he said with his best sarcasm. The dark-colored pony marched up to him, stuck her face in his, clearly not happy. She had golden eyes with slits for pupils instead of dots, and she huffed at him. You know... The least you could do is thank me, for real, she said. The Pegasus stallion narrowed his eyes at her and said, So now you're demanding a thank you. You know, I could get you arrested for this. Her eyes widened slightly, but she kept her angry stare. You wouldn't and couldn't. There was no pony that saw me tackle you, she said and grinned slightly to him. Besides, you wouldn't tattle on an adorable mare now, would you? The stallion narrowed his gaze further and said, Give me one reason not to. The mare inched her face closer and moved to his right, towards his ear, and whispered, Because you got tackled by one. 
The stallion's face turned red as the mare started laughing again. Finally irritated, the stallion turned and started walking off when he heard hoofbeats follow him. Come on! Don't be such a stick in the mud! The mare called as she followed him, much to his irritation. She ran up next to him and said, Hey, just calm down. I'm sorry for tackling you. The pegasus snorted and kept walking as she continued. Can you at least tell me your name? Mine's Angel. Angel Beats. She trotted in front of him, blocking the exit from the alley and extended a hoof to the orange pegasus. She put on her best sincere smile and hoped that he would at least be friendly with her as well. The pegasus considered for a second and reached out his own hoof cautiously. Comet burst, he said in a matter-of-a-fact tone. He gingerly shook her hoof and was suddenly hugged by her. Yay! A new friend! She said while at the same time squeezing the air from his lungs. Comet frantically pried himself from her grip and furrowed his brow. <coughs> we are not friends, he stated plainly as she giggled. Ooh, are you embarrassed to be hugged by a pretty mare? Comet stuck a hoof to his forehead and said, No, but you are not going to hug me like that. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to find the recruitment center. He spread his wings and nearly jumped when Angel squealed. You're going to join the guard too? She asked excitedly, and Comet froze. What do you mean by two? He asked, and she beamed at him. What do I mean? I'm joining the guard too, she stated with a happy ring. Comet tilted his head and said, Sorry, but I think they want real guards. He took off as she cried, Hey! What's that supposed to mean? Spreading her bat wings, Angel leaped into the air and pursued the orange pegasus. The sun did hurt her eyes since she was a bat pony and was used to flying at night, but the common pony misconception was that bat ponies were purely nocturnal. While it was true they functioned better at night, bat ponies could also go out in the day like normal ponies. Angel stayed back from Comet a bit to let him lead her to the recruitment station as well, since she actually had no idea where it was herself. It took the better part of a half an hour, but Comet eventually stood outside of a gray stone building with a plaque facing the street saying, Royal Canterlot Recruitment Center, number four. Comet took a deep breath and trotted inside. The building inside was unremarkable except for the large posters of Princess Celestia and Princess Luna on the far wall and a desk placed in front of them. The guard sitting there had his head pressed against the desk and snored loudly, echoing through the entire room. Comet gave the guard an unsure look before walking up to the desk. Before he could wake the guard, a voice from behind him shouted, So this is the place! Comet spun to see the annoying bat pony at the door, looking around in wonder at the room. At the desk, the guard woke instantly and sat straight up, ignoring the pool of drool on the desk. This enters for royal guard recruitment, he spoke seeming not to even notice the two ponies. We do not sell food, we do not pet sit, and our restrooms are not for public use. He sat as straight as he could for about three seconds, leaving a pegasus and a bat pony only to stare at him. The guard finally blinked a couple times and noticed the two. Oh, are you here to sign up? He asked casually. The orange pegasus responded, Uh, yes? The bat pony burst out laughing, again, and the guard adjusted his helmet. Well then, excellent. You are about to undertake the most important journey of your life and enter into the service of her royal highnesses, Princess Celestia and Luna. The guard said before leaning over and look at the bat pony. Um, uh, is she with you? He asked. Comet flushed. Uh, that would be a no, he said flatly as he walked over. Oh, don't act like that, sweetie. What about all those nights you and I spent together, and when you proposed? She said to Comet, and his jaw stiffened. The guard pony narrowed his eyes at the two and said, It is highly against regulation for both recruits to have a romantic relationship prior to entering the guard. Comet made a face that was somewhere between a scrowl and a grimace and said, We are most definitely not a couple. The guard tilted his head, but Angel burst out to laughing in his face. As she laughed... The guard caught on and said, Right. Well, here in the guard, we expect the utmost effort from all of our recruits to make the guard as honorable as possible. He rustled around the desk and produced two packets of paper. Take these and fill it out entirely, then bring it back to me, he said, handing Comet a packet. 
Angel finally finished her laughing fit and took the other one. The packet was fairly simple, with the first page being about personal information questions, but the next page was all about ethics. Comet scrawled on the parchment with a quill that he kept in his saddlebags, but Angel scratched her head as she read the test. The question she was stuck on was, how long do you wait until you interrupt a theft in progress? And there were four answers ranging from ignore it to stop it immediately. She leaned over to Comet and tried to sneak a gaze at his test to see what he put, but Comet moved to block her sight. The guard pony was still rummaging around his desk and Angel tried to move Comet's hoof. Comet pushed her hoof away and wrote more furiously on his test. Angel tried again and Comet let out a loud, loud sigh. He refused to move his hoof. Angel smiled to herself since she knew he was getting more annoyed and whispered, Hey, what'd you put for number 12? Comet slowly turned his head to her and stared. She offered him a sweet grin and he said, Are you really trying to cheat on an ethics test? The guard had snapped up to them, but he slammed his nose on the desk. A colorful series of words escaped his lips as he rubbed his nose and Angel fell over laughing. Comet ignored the incident and the guard grumbled. The next 30 minutes passed without incident, luckily for Comet, and the two ponies finished their respective packets. The guard took them and asked for them to sit for a while as he reviewed them. Comet sat as far away from Angel as he possibly could, which was only three chairs away. He sat as still as he could with his eyes forward, unlike the fidgeting Angel, who had found an interest in the noises her hooves made when tapped against the wall. It was really just an attempt to annoy Comet, but his rigid demeanor prevented even a little emotion from exciting him. Angel decided that she was bored and hopped down from her chair and trotted over to Comet. You know, you don't have to sit like that, she said to him. Comet's eyes refused to even twitch as she tried to get his attention. Hello? Uh, Equestria Comet? She called and waved her hooves in his front of his face. His gaze didn't move, so Angel tried some more cunning ways to pester him. She blew in his face, ruffled his mane, even extended his wings and pretended to make him fly. Also, she shook her flank in front of him, but Comet refused to even blink. Wearing her pouting face, Angel sat on the ground in front of Comet, stumped. The guard reviewing the test thought the whole ordeal was rather funny and found it hard to concentrate on the exams. Angel thought for a few moments and finally had an idea. She messed up her mane, gave Comet her best bedroom eyes, and slinked up next to him. She gently rubbed her forelegs and slowly nuzzled his neck, but Comet's gaze didn't even twitch. Just so you know, she whispered to him, I have a huge thing for guard ponies and armor. She saw his pupils expand and then retract a bit, and she knew she had his attention. Angel decided to turn up the pheromones and gave a little purr. She rubbed her nose on his neck and felt him tense up a bit more. Clearly, he was forcing himself to ignore her, but that made her even more determined to get a response from him. She then decided to move her hooves from his forelegs around his back and gently massage just, just above where his wings were located, the tensest and most sensitive muscles on his back. She felt a slight shiver run down his back. She leaned into his ear and whispered, Got you. He let out a huge sigh and shook her hooves off of him. She saw his face for a split second, but noticed it was just as red as his eyes. She laughed and fell back out of the chair on the opposite side, and Comet sulked. He was determined to ignore her, but she had gotten the better of him. Although, he would never say it out loud, though. He admitted that he really did like the massage that she gave him. Finally, the guard called them over. Once they arrived, the guard pony said, Congratulations are in order for both of you. You've both been accepted into the Royal Guard, and if you will come with me, we just need to finish some paperwork and you'll be off to basic training, cadets. He gave them a salute. Comet returned it, crisply, while Angel did so in a very carefree manner. <laughs>